Hello, everyone. It's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here for my favorite day of the week, Ben's Day. Hi, Ben. How are you? Hello. I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, it's been it's been a ride. I'm getting that um, sinking feeling that oh my God, C- Citizen Con has been almost two weeks ago, and you're starting to lose that enthusiasm. No, well, we, that's not true. we don't lose our enthusiasm here, but yeah, <laughs> you could say it like we don't lose our enthusiasm. <laughs> No, we just fall asleep in the middle of our enthusiasms. So you, you're getting ready for our wonderful live stream coming up in uh, just under a month. Yes, uh, November, I want to say 19th. It's, it's the Friday that week. Um, that'll be our regular November live anniversary live stream where we kick off the, uh, the big sale with all the ships and all that. Um, should be fun. Start saving now. Um, <laughs> now... That's usually when you bring back ships that haven't been sold for a long time. Yeah, yes, a lot of, lot of the ships. concepts are still in the works. Yeah, yeah, do you think we'll see another concept ship before then? I think we'll see one around that time. Okay, good. I, you know, I'm not looking to find out what it is, but, I mean, thank you so much for telling me that we're going to be seeing the hurricane on that week. What? <laughs> People are like... People were saying, you know, Nikki, he was lying to you. He knows what the hurricane is. And I'm like, you know what? I want to be surprised. You know, kind of like when you go down on Christmas morning, you want to open the present. You don't want to open it the night before so you don't have that enthusiasm, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what it is when it comes up. I'm going to jump right into questions because I got a whole bunch this week emailed to me, and that is the preferred way of getting them, and I'll give you another way to get them to me in the few, in after this call, or at the end of this call. But Gregory Patak, I think that's his name, and he says, we know there will be procedural weather based off of the biomes, but will there be seasons on some planets? For example, we go to a planet one month, and then a few months later, we go and it's covered with snow. And then a few months later, different colors, maybe it's green. And a few months later, maybe leaves are turning. I know they're working on that tech, but I can't promise when or anything like that. I didn't even think to ask that. I think just seeing how awesome it is now made me happy. But thinking about seasons and now you're spinning this planet around the sun maybe that would be cool to do oh definitely it would be cool to do uh, you know seasons weather all that stuff okay will the id beacon game be in 3.0 i i don't know about that one okay i can't comment on uh, 3.0 specifics until 2.6 ships Okay, and uh, so we don't know. So the next one about will we be able to group up with our friends and complete missions together and share rewards? That's not something that you'll know yet? No, no, I can't talk about it yet. Okay. All right, we'll move on to Sozo. And Sozo says, Hi, everyone I know owns a freelancer in some form, mostly Maxes and Durs, but some MISs. We all have been wondering... Does the absence of their listening on the ro- listing on the roadmap present a citizen pre- present at CitizenCon mean that the Lancer variants will be worked on only after all the other ships listed? No, it doesn't. It was uh, it was a very rough roadmap, and it left out a bunch of ships that are scheduled all throughout there. Now, I mean, could you talk to? the possibility that that roadmap or things that you want to do next year and over the course of months, some from 3.3 might be put into 3.1 and some from 3.1 put into 3.3 as time goes on? I mean, the roadmap is, it's hard to say anything other than that. That is the roadmap production has for us. So uh, I expect things will always change in some way, but uh, I think we're, we're pretty happy with what that one looks like. Okay. And this is Simon Alves. A question for one of the next interviews, which is this one, about the Polaris. Now, I know we got a lot of these answered, but which size logic do the Polaris turrets follow? We know they are size 4 and 5, but this, the old, a.k.a. Hornet Ball turret logic, was size 5 turret would hold 
Max 2S2 guns. The newer twin link logic that implemented with the Buccaneer where a size 5 turret would hold two S3 guns. There's also a third logic that when you look in the uh, the ship page it says that it's an S3 turret or S4 turret and it has size 4 guns. So which one do you see that following? Um, I would direct anybody to the last Q&A which was updated early this week with the correct information on the turrets. Um, so rather than muddle that at all Go to Q&A number two, uh, Stephen Duberfeld and uh, Stephen Cam uh, worked on Monday to get that correct. So. Okay. You know, people want to hear it from your mouth too, right? All right. Could we, pre okay, so this is from Rattle and Hum. Could we prevent space whales buying in-game money with real money, pay to win, by making purchase amounts inversely proportional to online game log time, time logged. There is already a cap, right? There is a cap right now. Um, I'm sure that'll change in the future to some degree, but uh, no, I, I don't think you'll ever find a business in history that operates trying to find ways to get people not to take their money. Um, you know, uh, I, I think the, the flaw in this logic is buying credits is not the same thing as buying a win. Um, there are lots of lots of people with lots of money and they're not necessarily using it to win. Yeah, I mean, I look at me, I go to school, I work, and those two take up over 80 hours of my life each week, which reduces my in-game time. But I want to have as full and rich an experience as my fellow org mates are having. So maybe I'm going to dump 50 to to $100 a month into the game so I can pay for my fuel, maybe get better weapons. I mean, I don't see why that's bad. because yeah, I mean, that, was exactly what we, that was exactly how we imagined it at the start. And I think it's everything we've seen so far bears that out. That it's, it's the way to have this work. And there are caps on how much money you could hold at once, so I yeah. think that's more than ample to fix it. And I, you know, I, I guarantee you that uh, in a year, when we look at who the the best player in Star is, is it's going to be somebody who has spent no money and dedicates thousands and thousands of hours to just flying really well. It's it's going to come down to skill. Okay. Now Spectrum is going to be a complete overhaul and replacement for the current forum system we have now yes forums in-game community everything is going to go through spectrum in some way so what's going to happen to threads like uh operation pitchfork or my own thread that have 30 40 50 000 comments on it and thousands of pages we're going to keep an archive version available for anything from the old forums so and then it will just start anew with the live yeah. updated forum which works yeah. more like Discord, I see. Yeah, it's very Discordy. Okay. Discord. Now Benoit said that that should be out in the coming weeks. Is the coming weeks October, or does that extend into uh, November? That sounds like a question about release dates. It's not because I would have expected him not to say weeks, months, or anything, and that will be coming in the future. No, I, I know it's going to uh, Ibukati in the not too distant future, but I'm not sure about the release date. Okay, that's pretty awesome. So, will we be able to have chat sessions with, uh, like right now, a lot of times you see developers ask questions, you know, give me, you know, give me some questions that we can answer here. Do you foresee now that it's live and updated that the developers putting themselves into a thread and possibly running a chat in that thread for a little bit? Yeah, I can see that happening. Um, you know, it's sort of a blend between the live chat and the forums is what we're looking at. Okay. And I, I know that everything was a blur at SitCon, and I've watched it a couple of times. There's voice communication in this, too, like there is in Discord? Uh, that's stuff they're building for the game itself. So, so it's not uh, really in Spectrum. That's going to be in-game. The Spectrum is, is in-game. It's Spectrum is our, our glue that's going to tie everything together. So it's going to permeate from my devices, phone, tablet, computer, and into the game system yes, itself? Yes, that's, that's the goal. We wanted to build the system that would be the same one that the game uses for 
all sorts of wow, that's pretty up. So if you were to envision it being in game, am I using some kind of equipment in game or am I using the program outside of the game UI itself? No, it'll be, it'll be entirely in, inside the game. That's pretty awesome. I like that. Um, so do you foresee somebody like the base radio being able to put their feed into Spectrum at some point? I hope so. You know, we have big plans for all the how to make streaming a thing in the game world. So it's, it's all tied to that. I like the idea of the radio stations because that's something I saw um, Richard Garriott's um, fan base pick up and start building little radios and then they play their radio that's, station. Yeah. yeah, that's did you see where he did the, uh, the song premiere? It was a Shooter Jennings song album. They did their premiere party in Charlie. I thought that was the coolest promotion. I was pretty big. He's just had a couple of big weeks, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's uh, done, I guess they had their. Uh, or they're having their Shroud of the Avatar big convention soon? I think so. Uh, I follow him on Twitter, so I kind of check in occasionally. But yeah, it's a lot of politics right now. Oh, uh, OK. Politics? He's very outspoken. Not against you, though. No, no, no. It's, it's all, I mean, his Twitter feed has all been oh, about, about yes, actual about, politics. Yeah. Yes, actual, yes, I saw that. I read his Donald Trump stuff, so yes, I know. <laughs> Come on, he's not the only one that's scared in this country, and we'll leave it at that. I, I don't want to be like shunned off of YouTube because I had a political statement here. Um, but how, who's winning the election in the UEE? I don't know. <laughs> um, do, do you foresee something like that actually happening in game, different political actions? Uh, I mean, yeah, I we've already that, set up some of that stuff with the Lord. We've got the. Uh... The conspiracy theorist guy, what was his name? Uh, can't remember. But they, they've done some <laughs> setup. I know that early on they had the whole thing about Xi'an starting to set up different service stations and stuff, and how the Senate was handling that, and that was pretty pretty cool. I like. Yeah, they did a lot of imagining on how the Senate and so on will work in stuff. All right. So um, I, I can't figure out who wrote this question. Um, we have many different types of ships in the game right now. We have salvage, we have miner, we have fighters, we have exploration, we have cargo. Do you foresee a type of ship function that's not represented by any of the ships that you might want to visit in the future? Uh, there are some outliers I'd like to see someday. Uh, I, someday I would love to make mine laying fun, um, mine laying, mine sweeping. But uh, pretty happy with what we have now. Okay. Some uh, more stealth stuff would be good. Sidecar for my dragonfly. We've talked about the sidecar. We've gone back and forth on it. We've prototyped out stuff. Um, we haven't found one we like, um, but I'm sure down the road at some point we will we will have some sort of sidecar equivalent. Maybe not the dragonfly, but there's other bikes. So. Oh, you, you didn't tell us that. Well, you did tell us that. Okay. Um, the second part of that question was turret in the sidecar. I, I guess what they mean is not a turret, but a you know machine gun that they could fire or something. Is that not in the finished Dragonfly? Can't you sit back to back? You sit back to back. back. Yeah, yeah, the guy back you're, has you're firing your You're firing your weapon. Yeah. They're talking about a mounted gun that's on like kind of a... It, it sounds cool. I mean... We definitely looked at that. We also looked at having the sidecar be more like a weapons pod, where it would be just like a huge single cannon on the side of the ship, so you'd have an offset, like ship-sized cannon. It didn't really work out when we were fooling around with it, but uh, it could come back. Okay. In the last episode, you mentioned a family-friendly vessel like the Jupiter II. Without giving much away, because we like our surprises, what type of what type of features would a family friendly ship include? I think something along the lines of the constellation. Um, yeah, the, your sort of standard multi crew ship that a family would take out into the galaxy. Um, I mean, I, I could almost see the constellation being that same classification. So, I think we got to look at more. What are other manufacturers' takes on the constellation? Uh, you know, what what uh, what is Origin or a MISC doing to compete with RSI in that arena? Okay. 
with the upgraded cutlass coming out around the corner, which I didn't hear this, so don't make this my words, okay? I know it's still somewhere in the distant future, right? It's in, it's they're, they're working on it right now. I don't know that we have that. A, that should be when the red and the blue come out, right? Uh, when red and blue will follow the, the they're doing the black now, and then red and blue will follow. Okay. Do you foresee? the constellation being more of a freelancer or more of a cross between a freelancer and a fighting ship which that's kind of crazy that's what it is isn't it both of them Wait. do that i, I I'm, I'm putting my own opinion i know i know <laughs> i know i i read it and i immediately started getting confused it's do you see the role of the upgraded so i guess i mean the reworked Cutlass being more like the freelancer, for instance, a fighting cargo ship. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, that's what it is. But that's what it is, right? Yeah. I guess because before it was the end all be all, right? It could fight, it could yeah. attack, it could board. Oh, that's the second part. I get it. Oh, and uh, you're removing the boarding functionality of it? I can't comment on it. I know, I know. This is, I, I, I don't know where this one's coming from, sorry. I apologize. And these were just given to me, and I have, like, names for the first five, and then I just have questions for the next 15, you know? So we're going to we're gonna cut that one out. I um, guess it's, it, it goes back to some specific forum conversation with Matt Sherman or somebody, but I, I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, it might have been something in the... Uh, Maybe I should go look in through the uh, Cutlass topic to see if that came from there. Maybe people think it's coming out. So, I... All right, that's cool. Last week we were talking about the Polaris and the Polaris being something more of a PT boat. PT boats were very successful in destroying many Japanese craft in World War II. Do you foresee battles in squadron 42 relying heavily on something like a polaris not squadron 42 the polaris is uh after after yeah yeah but so, i do I, I do foresee it being used as to like torpedo large transports and destroyers and such it's going to be instrumental in the attack on tiber for operation pitchfork <laughs> being that we don't meet two king ships i hope but that will be good <laughs> Um, could you chime in on Operation Havel? Iron Havel? I can't. <laughs> okay. Is it still a thing, though? That's all I want to know. Yeah, it's still, still a thing. Yeah. We'll be ready. So all I got to do is get Tyler drunk and ask him. <laughs> yeah, I like I like when you're quiet about things. Um, I can't Actually, I'm kind of low energy today. I'm sorry. I, I see it's going to be a really dull show. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, everybody. Is there going to be like... You couldn't get Ben to say anything this week. I'm like, yeah, because when he does say things, usually we have to recant it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, are you excited about uh, David's game coming out soon? David Ladyman's? Yes, yes. In fact, we just started having a uh, board game night here in Los Angeles. So uh, once once I get my copy, I will happily bring it to play it with the team. I can't wait for that. I think a bunch of us are going to have to stre uh, stream his gameplay. You know, stream us all over the country playing it because, you know, David's a really intense and very interesting man to talk to. And uh, just bringing this back to us after that many years is going to be pretty cool. I can't wait to it, see. It's a fun game. I, I got to play it uh, prototype back before they kicked off their uh, Kickstarter. Really enjoyed it. Did you make it into the game? I did. Uh, I'm one of the, uh, Ali and I, the, he wanted to thank us for our support during the Kickstarter, so he made us, uh, I think, diplomats or something. Okay, and you have a Kickstarter. Everybody knows about it, but for those people that don't, let's talk about it. Or can well, I, I don't want to plug it at work. I feel bad. Uh, I know, I know. You're very big. Out. So we're going to we're gonna invite you back tomorrow night at, I think we said, 8 o'clock your time? That sounds seven. good. Or 7. So whatever works for you. Yeah, I think 7 o'clock. Well, are you home at... I don't know. Are you home at 7? Come on, be serious. Uh, let's see. It's a jump point. Uh, you know, I can do that from home. I, I should be home at 7. All right. If not, we'll do it later. But tomorrow night at 7, what I'll do, I'm going to have a li possibly, possibly a live stream with uh, Ben and Sophie Girl, possibly, or it will be cool. recorded. And we'll be talking about something that he's doing. And we won't plug it here because this is about CIG. Um, 
But if you know what it is, I certainly would appreciate your support. <laughs> yeah, if you know what it is, we know what it is. But we can't talk about it here. It's kind of like me not saying I work for a fruit company and sell bananas. No, it's not even a rule or anything. Chris, Chris is like, yeah, go ahead. That's no problem. But uh, I don't know. I wanted to. You're too nice about it. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to support you because you support everybody so amazingly well. Well, I, mean, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and you usually have more energy. What happened to you this week? Are you guys really I, working that hard? We're working hard. I think I might be getting that cold finally. Allie had it. Uh, I think it may have finally passed to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Tyler's TwitchCon call has passed from person to person. Well, it wasn't just Tyler's. Oh, it was a TwitchCon? Okay, did, we brought it back from TwitchCon, I think, and then gave it to all of you. Did, did you hug Eddie? I, God, I did hug Eddie, didn't I? Yes. That might have been what did it. I didn't hug Tyler until the you know until that last day when he showed up at Sitcon. It was Eddie hugging me every day before that. Which Eddie, thank you for the hugs. There's no regret. Um, but he was sick too, and he told me as he hugged me, "I'm sick." And I'm like, "Well, thank you for whatever you're about ready to give me." <laughs> And I just expected that that's what happened. But you had Tyra come out from Austin and, okay. Yeah. And with David passing it around over in the dev team, it was, uh, I think that did not come across on the uh, the video we did about the making of the demo, but everybody was terribly sick. Uh, everyone in that room was uh, had a throbbing headache and wanted to go sleep forever. So it was, it was a tough, uh, tough couple of weeks. All right. So, uh, I know female models weren't shown at CitizenCon. I mean, we saw a couple in the videos afterwards, like the Road to Sitcon had a bunch of female models in it. Do you, it, it, I don't want to ask you a when question. I, I can't say when. I don't, I don't know when. I don't want to ask a when question. You have obviously seen them. Is it worth the wait? Of course. I mean anything to increase the diversity of our universe is worth the wait. Uh, no. You know, some of the people like myself are critical because we played old Baldy for a year, maybe two before they changed anything. And I understand Chris is intense and really wants um, as close to perfection as he can get. But for the for the ladies in the universe, it really does ruin our gameplay in some ways because we want to do many things, you know. So it's like we're waiting for that because what I'm wait, and I I'm gonna remove what I was gonna say next. And I think the biggest thing that you're gonna see different when that comes out is a whole bunch more content created by the community. I'm absolutely, uh, yeah. It, it's it's not for lack of wanting to have them right now. It's just we want to get it right. We want to do it where it's appropriate for the test cycle. Because doubling the number of player models does mean doubling all sorts of things in the QA process. Um, but and once we get it, it's going to be a big win. You know, the, any community. You know, people talk about like women being outside of science fiction. You know, kind of. You know, outside the boys' club. Women are just essential to making communities that last. Uh, you wouldn't have Star Trek today if it weren't for the female fandom in the 1970s being the people who had that rallying cry. They, uh, I don't know, we, women good. Yeah, what that, I'm trying to say. that was my question for today. I don't want to hold you accountable for it because I know you're on our side. Mm -hmm. And I know Chris is more on our side than people know. He's trying to deliver us the game that we're going to love. And he's holding it to the standard that we're going to hold him to. So I don't disagree with the length of time that it's taken. And I'm not saying I'm disappointed. It's more that I'm anxious. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I can understand that. Because it's, it's, I want to stream. I want to, do con, I want to do content. And I want to role play content. And it's tough in the current incarnation. But that doesn't remove the fun and the beauty that is in the game at this point. Yeah, I mean, it did and it's not just female characters, it's the whole character selection, you know, size, color, everything, you know, uh, we need to get all that into, I mean, they're, they're tools for our backers, they, they'll lead to all sorts of content creation, as you say. Okay, so 
you say diversity, and there's absolutely no way you can answer this question for the immediate future because it doesn't make sense to answer it for the immediate future. But two years from now, the game is out. Do you see the ability at some point to be able to roll a Traveran or a Xion character? Yeah, uh, we, we've always looked at that as down the road. You know, we, we're creating the assets. And we will continue to expand them. It, it wouldn't be something we do at launch. I mean, I think it would be some sort of, it's a, it's a, a distinct possibility in the future, I'll say. I don't even know what Tavern looks like. Do you? I do, but uh, nobody else does, does, right? Yeah. And Shion? We we put up the the, uh, the turtle guys. The turtle guys. Okay, but still, I don't expect you guys to let people roll Vandal for a long time. No. Well, we'll see what we discover about the Vandal. Okay. I think they're more like the Borg than they are like the Karate. I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking maybe pure evil, not. Well, I think, I mean, going back to Wing Commander, Chris kicked off the original game with the Karathi being just a placeholder for mean space aliens, and then he kind of built them up. And I, I know our writers are already, they're already building that so, more to their culture. So it might be a more complex race than a, they're just evil and they kill people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you have to. You have to do that these days. That will be much more interesting. Okay, I can see that. Well, Ben, we're reaching the 30-minute mark. I really okay. appreciate your time. I'm sorry that I took the remaining energy you had, but I will see you tomorrow night to talk about no. our Kickstarter. That sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I was low energy, everybody. Uh, I'll, Don't be sorry. I'll drink some Don't energy be drinks before the next one. Don't be sorry. You're wonderful. And people Thanks. love that you do this with me each week, and so do I. I appreciate it. I like catching up with you, right. even if I can't answer any of the questions. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, people dig through it for whatever little things they can get. Um, but Hurricane doesn't exist? Okay. Wait, no, it, it exists. What, the all-weather fighter? All-weather fighter? Wait, wait, is there Unpack weather in that space? Guy. See ya. <laughs> and folks, with that said, you all be safe out there. <laughs> and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.